Uh, I would like to uh, uh, invite our second speaker who has already uh, joined um, this session, uh, Dr. Arjun Acharya, to um, deliver his talk on uh, energy sources, common energy sources in chicken feed formulation. Uh, let me introduce him first. Dr. Arjun Acharya started his career in poultry field since uh, 2009, after completing his bachelor in veterinary science in animal husbandry from the Institute of Agriculture and Animal Science, Tribune University. He is now serving as uh, Managing Director of Hewa Group of Poultry Industries Private Limited at Pokhara. Uh, he is also associated with Global Agro Product Feed Company and uh, Veterinary Pharmaceutical Industries. Also, he is Assistant Professor at Institute of Agriculture and Animal Science, Lamjung Campus. At the Department of Animal Sciences and Aquaculture. Currently, a PhD scholar in animal nutrition at Agriculture and Forestry University. His research interests are breeder nutrition and gut health. Today, he is going to deliver his talk on commonly used energy sources in poultry feed formulation. I would like to request Dr. Acharya to focus more on the energy sources widely used and easily available in the please context. Dr. Acharya, now the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Pibek, and good morning, happy participants. Uh, so I would like to start the topic. Vivek, fully seen how to. Yeah, it's it's uh, visible, but uh, mm -hmm. and not fully uh, screen. But uh, but uh, not in fully screen. Yeah, not in full fully screen. So, Did you uh, press your five there? Your five. Your five. Okay, okay, okay. Your five. So again, I have to open. I think it's saved. Your five. Not working. Or maybe at the bottom there is a presentation mode you can press there maybe okay. wait for a minute here. wait for a minute wait for a minute it's here and here so i'm getting problem over here may i restart once yeah yeah please please Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's start our topic. Uh, these are in this time, I will be talking about the common energy sources which are used in feed formulation in poultry. As we all know, the feed constitutes the major expenditure in poultry production. So, the efficiency of uh, uh, in feeding or the efficiency in use of the feed ingredients is the major factor for the successful poultry for production. 
out of the various sources, the uh, the major nutrients in the poultry can be categorized in the following, like uh, water, carbohydrate, protein, fat, minerals, and vitamins. Among the uh, sources, the most important and most uh, uh, expensive sources are energy, protein, and available phosphorus. Energy, it consists the larger part of the, the feed. So it is considered as the one of the expensive nutrients, protein is Import, it is also expensive and available phosphorus. Phosphorus price is also um, increasing nowadays. So these are the most expensive nutrients in poultry feed. Talking to the uh, energy sources, the, of every everything uh, uh, except minerals, they supply energy to the um, poultry. But the carbohydrates and fats are the major or principal sources of energy. They are categorized as the major carbohydrate sources. Out of the carbohydrate sources, the cereal grains and its byproducts, they, they compromise, they, compromise uh, they provide about 60 to 70 percent of the dietary energy for the poultry. So it plays any, the energy plays an important role in cost effective feed formulation. Therefore, if we could uh, estimate the uh, accurate energy of the feed ingredients, then it will be better or there will be lower cost of production in poultry. So it's there is important role of the energy in feed formulation. Moreover, if we uh, give free choice to the poultry uh, with different ingredients, then the poultry eat to satisfy their energy needs first, and then they ruin for other. So there must be control in the intake of all nutrients by including them in different proportion to available energy level. That means if the, if the energy level is low in feed, then sometimes the balls will consume more feed. And if the energy level is high, then they will satisfy earlier and the feed consumption will be low. So according to the energy level, the other, um, other nutrient levels should be adjusted. Energy supplements, generally, they are divided into high energy and low energy supplements. Like high energy supplements are maize, wheat, broken rice, fat, and oils, sorghum. And low energy supplements are rice bolis, rice bran, wheat bran, DORB, molasses, millets, etc. Out of those, the maize, major or dominant is corn or maize. The starch in the maize is easily are readily digested by poultry. And then fats are also the much more concentrated form of energy, which yields 2 to 2.5 times more energy than the carbohydrate on weight basis. As well as the fats are the source of essential fatty acids like linoleic acid, linoleic acid, and arachidonic acids, which are important in poultry. In uh, regarding energy, out of the total gross energy, very few is used for production because the loss of the energy in like in fecal energy loss, gases and urinary energy loss, heat increment, and the loss in maintenance, they are higher and very low, very little part is used in production. So it is one of the worst energies, most of the part of the energy waste is waste in the form of uh, fecal energy, gases energy, heat increment, and maintenance energy. For example, I have shown, shown, kept this slide just to show that out of the 100, 100% uh, out of these, let's say 100%, only 38% can be used in production for in production in hen in case of hen. Similarly, in case of pig, 30% sheep and other milking, uh, milking cow, steed, they are they have also much lower uh, use of energy in production. However, poultry can use higher amount of energy for their production. Similarly, in case of broiler also, if we see the maintenance, the loss in maintenance, loss in heat increment and are more than use than the <clears throat> amount of energy used in growth. Therefore, it is one of the uh, waste nutrient, most waste, waste nutrient also, very few or very little uh, part of the energy is used in the production. Therefore, the energy values of fat also, they are also affected by the age. Young chickens have relatively lower bile salts and hence less energy values for energy. And varieties and processing conditions affect the free stuff energy values various procedures and during uh, processing of the feed, they also affect the energy value. 
higher the metabolizable energy values and ultimately there will be higher energy available for growth and production. Therefore, everything should be done to enhance the utilization of dietary energy for productive body functions. So various activities like processing and uh, edit, addition of the cell, uh, other feed additives, enzymes, that should be done to utilize the energy from the feed ingredients. Now we will go, the, uh, go towards the major energy sources which are used in commonly used in our context also, maize or corn. This is the major contributor of energy because as we have already discussed, discussed earlier that uh, its starch is easily digestible. So, uh, and it's, it, it has uh, pigments also, and it is easily palatable and it has essential fatty acid composition also. So it is the major contribution of energy in the poultry diet. It contains highest amount of energy among the cereal grains around 33,350 kilocalorie per gram per kg, and it has uh, around 8 to 9 percent of crude protein depending upon the varieties, and it has very low fiber content. The total digestive nutrient of maize is high, 85 to 90 percent. It is, however, it is low in calcium and deficient in vitamin B12, and it is fair in phosphorus content. Aloe maize provides carotene and xanthophylls pigment for coloration of egg, poultry fat, and skin when it is used at uh, 30% are above in the diet, then the color of the maize um, in the xanthophyll will be helpful for the color of egg yolk and poultry fat and skin. It is also the good source of uh, linoleic acid, which contributes for egg size. And maize protein is mainly deficient in tryptophan and lysine. The damaged grains, immature grains, and improperly stored grains have higher moisture content, which is uh, which provides the favorable condition for development of aspergillus flavors, infestation, and produce aflatoxin, which decreases the quality of the grains. Although, if we see the corn good quality by our eye or looking through the grains, grains but it cannot be denied that it can it don't it do not contain any mycotoxin. That might be because mycotoxin is an invisible thing. So proper storage, proper mature grains should be selected for the poultry feed. It also contains non-starch polysaccharides like arabinogenins and phytate as a anti nutritional factors. Therefore, um, maize can be included up to 70% in poultry ration, but depends upon the prices and formulation. Looking over the structure of maize, 82% of the dry weight, it is covered by endosperm, which contains starch and protein. The outer cover is um, uh, called pericarp, which protects the inner nutrients, inner material, and germ, which is the genetic information, and it contains enzymes, and while this is the deep from where the nutrients flow inside the maize. From the endosperm, during the various processes, as we will talk later, the corn gluten meal, uh, corn gluten meal will be produced from this large part of the endosperm. So looking over the, um, looking for the criteria of selection of maize, the various parameter, parameters can be um, just like moisture percentage, fungus percentage, moldy cones, weevil holes, dead seeds, immature seeds, broken seeds, foreign materials or oral trends, live weevils, smell, odor, hotness, when you feel, wetness, temperature, lumps, therium, chemicals, each and every. These are the various checking criteria for maize quality. We'll talk over maize because it is, it is a major contributor of energy as we have already discussed. So selection of good quality maize will automatically increase our quality in feed. So looking over the good quality of maize, if we found such type of maize, like which is moist, moisture is below 15 or 12 to 14%. Fungus, less than 3%. Mold seeds, there are, if the mold seeds are less than 5%, broken seeds are less than 4%, dead seeds, less than 4%, immature seeds, less than 5%, small seed, less than 5%, weevil holes, less than 3%, live weevils, there should not be any live weevils. So if the, the, the maize, uh, fits for within this criteria, then we can expect that, we can expect that the energy value for this maize, this quality of this type of maize would be around 3,300. 
kilo gallon per kg. So you can estimate and we can feed the uh, software with the, this type of energy value and around 8.5 or 8% 8 of crude protein. Similarly, if we find such type of grains slightly infested with the molds, the most in such type of grains, the moisture percent will obviously higher than 14%, and the mold grains will be uh, more than 5%. So in this case, I have seen that if there, the, if the, uh, there is in, um, mold infection, there will be other effect in poultry like with the mycotoxin, but energy value will not be decreased is in case of other like in other other infestation so energy value will be around 30 to 100 kilocalorie per kg with the mole infested grain also similarly uh, maize with the broken seeds if there are the broken seeds then there will be surface area higher for mole infection so if the if such type of maize will also have more more if then 14 percent moisture and the grains are more than four percent broken then the such type of maize will have, will have around 30 to 100 kilocalorie per kg the effect in such type of broken maize is that it will be easily affected with the molds but the energy will be slightly lower than the full grain Similarly, maize with the fungus like this, moisture above 14%, fungus more than 3%. In this type of uh, maize also, energy is around 3,050 kilocalorie per kg. But there, is, there are effects with other mycotoxins due to fungus. Similarly, with the immature seeds, when there are more than 5% immature seeds in the maize and more than 14% of moisture, the energy there will be this can this such type of maize will be estimated as 2900 2, kilocalorie per kg similarly if there are weevil holes then it will drastically reduce the energy value of the maize like more than 3% weevil holes and there are if live weevils are live insects are there then if there is more the more than 14% moisture then such type of maize will have low energy value like 2500 kilocalorie per kg only Similarly, with the dead seeds also. Dead seeds are also the poor sources of carbohydrate. So they will supply low type of energy around 2,200 kilocalorie per kg. So looking over the different types of the maize grains, good quality which will have above 33,000, around 33,330 or 3,340, 50. And um, in fungal seeds, the energy, energy will not be so drastically changed in mold seeds also similarly, but in immature seeds, there will be change in the energy. In broken seed, we will hold seed, there will be severe drop of energy. In dead seeds also, there will be change in energy, decrease in energy content. So looking over the different quality, visual quality of the um, grains, we can estimate the energy content of the maize. So according to the, um, according to the uh, their uh, physical st structure and moisture percentage, we can tentatively or approximately estimate the value of energy content in the main scale. So I have kept this slide generally uh, around 15% moisture or dry matter 85%, crude protein 825, metabolizable energy 3330 kilocalorie per kg. Similarly, other parameters are here. Uh, what happens if we store the maize for a long time? So the nutritional value of corn may be altered due to lengthy storage. Wormrens 1974 noted that storage may decrease the fat and increase the free fatty acid content of the grains, which may reduce their energy content. So although there will be, um, the grains will be protected from grains and weevils and moles, the energy content of the maize grains, which are stored for more than three years or longer time, will have slightly lower energy value than the normal. And organic acids can be used to prevent mold growth during transportation and storage, but no effect on any mycotoxin which are already produced. So if the, there is uh, in the high moisture grains during loading and during storage also, if we use the organic acids, we can prevent from mold growth. But if there is already mycotoxin in the 
grain that could not be reduced. So excessive or prolonged heating of the maize grains, which might be due to, which might be to, which might we will do to reduce the moisture, which will decrease the lysine value is a, because of milliard reaction with available carbohydrates. So heating also will, excessive heating or prolonged heating will also decrease the value of lysine. Similarly, as you have, I have already said that immature and dead seeds, seeds with high moisture content, wavy holes and small grains have lower energy value. Energy and inclusion level, we can um, use 60 to 70% of the diet. Uh, in younger birds, uh, zero to four, four weeks, in young birds, we can use 60% and for adult birds, we can use up to 70% of the diet. Now, this is the second source, important source of energy. Wheat is rich in protein and calcium, but low in fat and energy compared to maize. It is a good source next to maize and sorghum. It has metabolizable energy tentatively 3100 to 3150 kilocalorie per kg. Protein content is highly variable, around 11 to 14 percent. Wheat protein is deficient in methionine and theranine. Looking over the structure of the wheat grain, the outer pet cap, alluring layer, and starchy endosperm. The starchy endosperm is covered or protected by the pet cap, alluring layer. And pollen consists uh, consist about 13% of the total weight of the grain. In, and other starchy endosperm contains about the 85% of the grain. And germ contains about 2% of the weight of the wheat. So these are the, and during the processing of the uh, wheat, various byproducts from these bar and the zone and starch in the sperm and barn are produced and which have different energy or protein value, nutrition value. The barn layer, outer layer is composed, comprised of high non starch polysaccharides, which contain, contains the equal amount of oil, mineral, matter, and protein, but it has high non starch polysaccharides. The endosperm consists mainly of starch granules that are surrounded by the protein matrix, as I have already seen shown in the picture. Wheat contains indigestible non starch polysaccharides, aramine xylens, that reduces the performance of the poultry. The enzyme xylenase may be used when wheat is incorporated in the feed at high level. Xylenase degrades, degrade, degrades the aramine xylens in the cell wall, releasing the encapsulated stars and other nutrients from the inside from inside the cell wall, at the same time reducing the digestive viscosity. When you use um, wheat in the diet, then the viscosity of the um, digester will be higher and the, there will be problem, digestive problem. And ultimately, if we use higher without the using without using the enzyme, then various um, problems like uh, the necrotic enteritis or other gut health problem will be seen in the poultry. So inclusion rate, will be around 15% to young ones and 25% to adult and adult layers. However, the use of challenge engine can be increased to 20 to 60% respectively. If we use challenge engine, then you, and there is the price of the price of the wheat is low in the season, we can use up to 60% also, but the use of challenge engine should be compulsory in such type of feed. So, root protein, it, I have already shown in that it varies 12 to 14 or 12 to 15 percent, metabolize energy slightly near to maize and other as the different uh, amino acid level of the wheat. So, what are the potential problems while using the wheat? As discussed earlier, wheat contains variable quantity of xylen, which is poorly digested and results in wheat pieces excreta together with poor digestibility. And this can be overcome by using synthetic xylenase enzymes. So feeding much more than 30% wheat in the diet, which can lead to beak or mouth impaction that can reduce the feeding activity. As well as it will be, it will provide the opportunity uh, or, uh, for the mold and microtoxin development because the gum forms in the beak of the beak of the bar. So there will be mold development and microtoxin development. This problem can resolve by grinding the wheat more coarsely. Yes, this can be reduced by coarsing, coarse grain, by making the coarse grains. Now the third uh, important 
source of energy is rice or broken rice. Uh, broken rice is a grain of rice consisting of grains broken in milling process, but the energy content will be more similar to the intact rice. The energy content in rice or broken rice will be around 2600 to 2700 kilocalories per kg. It's low in protein. 40 to 45 percent can be included in poultry diet. Complete replacement of maize can be done by broken rice, but if there is not no issues in laying hens like yellow color of the yolk, so if there is no issues, then we can completely replace also. These are the very specific reasons for broken rice: maize 10 to 12 percent, moisture moisture 10 to 12 percent, protein 6 to 8 percent, minerals 1 to 3 percent, fat 1 to 3 percent, fiber less than 2.5 percent, high energy. 2600 to 2700 kilocalorie per kg, you can assume like this. Now, although the soybeans are the source of protein, but they are also, they also supply good amount of energy to the field. So they are also, I have also kept the, those full packs so in the energy topic. So I've been prior to oil extraction is referred to as full fat soybean. Full fat soybeans, they are intact seeds also full fat soybean meal is a an adequately heat process whole soybean meal it contains complete amount of oil and protein naturally present in soybeans they are valued as good quality fed ingredient going to high oil 18 to 20 percent oil and protein 38 percent protein in full fat soy full fat soybean meal is produced by two methods or various methods extrusion cooking and flatting or micronize or various heating we can use various heating methods in both methods or in several methods soybeans are subjected to adequate heat processing to destroy the anti nutrition factors like trypsin chemotrypsin inhibitors hemiagglutinins lecithins and saponins which are present in raw soybean as well as to improve its digestibility so full fat soybean we cannot use the raw soybean due to these anti nutrition factors in the soybean intact soybean and if we heat then uh, to a proper um, temperature, then we can improve its digestibility also. It contains around, as I discussed earlier, 38% uh, protein, energy 3,750 kilocalories per kg, fat 18 to 20%, fiber 6% due to, this also depends upon the, the hull or hull, and mm -hmm. lysine 2.4, methane in 0.54, calcium 0.25, and total phosphorus 0.6%. And using full fat, in while using full fat, full fat swear, the storage condition, storage is also the another problem due to high oil content. Due to high oil content, the oxidative density will be developed and the quality of the soybean, um, full fat swear will be decreased. Underheating of the soybean can be detected by UDS test. So the proper heating temperature for like different methods are used like short term, um, uh, short duration for long, um, for higher temperature and, um, and or uh, long time with short or, the, or low heat. Both can be used. But purport heating should be done. Like underheating of the soybean can be detected by urease test or QS protein solubility. Feeding underheated soybean will cause poor growth or reduced egg production due to the presence of the anti nutritional factor as discussed, clips in emitter. So, and due to these the anti nutritional factor, the size of the pancreas in the bulb will be increased, which can be seen in the postmortem. Similarly, overheating will cause destruction of lysine and other heat sensitive amino acids. Therefore, inclusion rate of the full fat soybean is 0 to uh, in young chicks is maximum 50% and for adults, 20 to 30% we can use. These are also the major energy source fat and wells. Fat and wells are collectively known as lipids. They are the concentrated source of energy which provide a significant amount of energy to the poultry diets. So small changes in inclusion level can have significant effect on diet metabolizable energy. They can be included in the diet up to three to five percent in order to ensure adequate level of energy. These are also the source uh, source of linoleic acid in the diet. So uh, at least one percent addition of at least one percent will be beneficial to the poultry 
because of the linoleic acid content in the fat and oil. So it can it, it is recommended to include at least one percent, regardless of economical and nutritional concern, con considerations. The commonly used oils in poultry diet are soybean oil, canola oil, rice thin, rice brown oil, and palm oil. And the fats include tallow, poultry fat, feed grade animal fat, etc. These are the fat and oil source. Fats have lower heat increment than carbohydrates and proteins when used in poultry. Therefore, during the summer season, we can use, we can add oil in the feed to uh, decrease the heat stress in the birds. Use of fat improves the performance of chickens during high temperature stress by replacing the carbohydrate calories with fat calories and by reducing the total protein while maintaining the appropriate presence of amino acid and energy. So, in summer season, to decrease the heat stress, temperature stress in, in birds, we can use oil and reduce the total protein content by balancing the amino acids in the diet. Therefore, the characteristics of good fat are more linoleic acid content, which is important in, ex, in, in exercise, low in free, free fat acids, those uh, fats and oils which have uh, higher free fat acids are uh, considered not good. So, free fat acid content should be in lower value, low oxidation status, peroxide value, uh, and higher iodine value. These are the different tests which are used to uh, identify the quality of fat. Saturated, saturated fat have less energy than unsaturated fat. Saturated fats provide less energy than unsaturated fat. So the ratio of saturated fat and unsaturated fat should be managed during feed purposes. Reason to add fat and oils. These are the, is discussed. These are the source of essential fat acids. These are the source of energy. These, re, these fat and oils reduce heat stress. This improves feed digestibility by decreasing the rate of pass, feed passes, therefore increasing utilization of the nutrients in the intestine. These improve feed processing, like acting as a lubricant, reducing the dust, uh, while use of higher percentage of uh, oil in the feed, they will, feed, then there will be dust particle in the feed also. Improve the feed palatability, absorption, feed absorption, increase lipid soluble compounds, like uh, absorption of the lipid so fat soluble vitamins also. So these are the reasons to add the fat soluble fat and oil in the diet. While using fat and oil in the diet, the antioxidants should be added to the diet to prevent the fat in the feed from becoming rancid. So especially during the hot season, uh, because high temperature accelerates the oxidation of fat. Therefore, in this the, in this season or while using fat, which will be um, used for or which will be stored for um, more days, then at the time, the antioxidants should be added to the diet. Saturated fat acids are less absorbable and have lower energy value than unsaturated fat acids because the unsaturated fat acids are polar solutes and therefore they are readily incorporated into the missiles and absorbed is discussed earlier in the physiology of physiology of the fat absorption. So the unsaturated fats are readily incorporated into the missiles and they are easily formed in missiles and they are absorbed through the intestine. The requirement of fat and oil for poultry by among species and, and age is uh, discussed earlier also. The young birds, uh, there is the limitation um, of the bile, bile salt secretion. In the first few days, there will be lower value of the, um, lower value of the energy in feed for the broilers, for the birds. In addition, feeding a lot of energy unwanted to the young birds might lead to accumulation of fat at a young age, which might negatively affect the growth. So there are limitations in using. The start schools that same type of same soy oil provides above 9,000 9, kilocalorie in one point, above 1.5 other adult birds. But in, in zero to one point for young birds, it, it provides 8,800 kilocalories. Similarly, other well or fat sources also the same. In young birds, due to the um, unavailable or lower concentration of bile salts, they, they, could, they, they could not use the full, full potential of the fats and oils. These are the various measures of oxidation, like peroxide, peroxide value, anisidine value, Totox value, acid value, iodine value, which are used for the 
um, identification of the quality of the fat and wells. So how to prevent oxidation of the fats and wells? By decreasing the temperature. So storing the fats and wells in feed industry within the low temperature by reducing oxygen exposure in closed drums or closed drums, no direct light contact, decreasing moisture percentage, avoiding contact with transition metals like iron, copper, which acts as pro-oxidants and use of antioxidants during storage also prevent the oxidation of the fats and wells, which will reduce the quality of the fat and wells. Similarly, uh, it's already discussed that uh, except minerals, all the nutrients, all the ingredients provide energy. Similarly, the plant and animal protein sources also supplies the energy to the, the, the to those ingredients will also provide the energy in the feed formation. The geographical location, season, and method of cultivation and genetic and environmental impacts and processing method and the amount of remaining oil after processing, these are also the difference that they also cause the differences in the energy content between different vegetable protein sources. For example, soybean meal, so in soybean meal, 2,500 um, metabolism energy, kilocalorie per kg metabolism energy in canola, 2,000 cotton seed in 2,300 and sunflower seed, 2,200 kilocalorie per kg we can get the metabolic energy while in meat bone, meat and bone, uh, meat, fish, and poultry pipe, they all provide the significant amount of energy besides the protein source. Similarly, the byproducts like rice bran. Looking over the structure of the rice bran, the outer cover is hull, then pericarp, seed coat, nuclear, nucleus, Alluring layer, endosperm, and embryo. So, except removing the hull, outer cover, then all these pericarps, seed coat, nucleus, alluring layers, these all compose, these all comprises of the bran. There is, uh, in common term, we use the rice bran and rice polish. Also, we have, uh, we have uh, heard the rice polish, but rice polish and rice bran, these four components, if there are four components, then that is a bran. And uh, the very fine uh, inner layer, if there is a separated uh, inner layer, then that, is, that can be called as polis. But generally, we use only one term, brown here. Rice brown is a byproduct obtained as a result of dehulling and cleaning brown rice for the human consumption of white rice. So, uh, removing the hull, then uh, after polishing, what we get that we call is brown. It consists mainly of brown layer and germ of the rice with some fragments of hull and some fragments of broken rice. It consists of 30% of the rice polishing and 70% true brown. The mixture is term, generally termed as brown. The polishing are very high in fat and, and low in fiber, whereas true brown is low in fat and high in fiber. This source of protein, these are the resource of protein, lipid, vitamins, and trace minerals. It is palatable for this stuff uses fiber and energy source in both poultry and cattle. This can be used in both. Rice bran is valuable product with 12 to 14 percent of protein, 12 percent fiber, 6 to 10 percent fat, which is mostly unsaturated fat pieces. Hence, it becomes rancid fast. It is a good source of energy around 2400 to 2600 kilocalorie per kg, and it is a good source of big complex group of vitamins. Rice bran has a good amino acid profile compared to cereal grains and is slightly deficient in lysine. And rice bran can be included up to 10 to 20% in chick ration and 25 to 30% in the grower and layer ration. When the high level rice bran is used above 40%, there is often growth depression and reduction in feed efficiency due to presence of trips in inhibitor and high level of phytic acid. Phosphorus content of rice bran is assumed to be about 10% available for young birds, but its availability increases with the age and may cause imbalance in calcium phosphorus. So if we use higher amount of uh, rice bran in old age birds, then they, the old age birds are capable of, of uh, making available phosphorus from those rice bran. So in this case, we can, and that, that may cause the imbalance in calcium phosphorus also. So addition of extra calcium then recommended in then the recommended dose can solve this type of problem 
high density enzyme can be used in diet using higher quantity of rice bran. Usually, the use of actinase, uh, arabinose alanine enzyme may improve the quality of the food. So, really the anti nutrition factors of rice bran, phytates or phytic acid, these uh, bind the minerals like zinc, copper, iron, magnesium, niacin, and calcium, preventing the absorption and other trypsin inhibitor, which can be um, deactivated with the heat or steam rice bran deactivates it. So, the looking over the specification of the rice bran. Moisture 10 to 12 percent, mineral content 12 to 14 percent, fiber 12 to 14, fat 6 to 10 percent, protein 12 to 14 percent, and density negative. If such specification meets, then such type of rice bran contains 2400 to 2600 metabolism energy. So, looking over the um, quality of the rice bran, if we see visually also, if we see the um, more percentage of the hulls in the rice bran, then the energy value will be low and fiber value will be higher. So if we taste also, um, the uh, we can we can guess the presence or adulteration of the uh, rice brown with the hulls. So in, if we get the uh, mixed uh, with the rice hulls, then the energy value will be lower in such type of rice brown. This is the cause of rancidity. If there are such type of lumps, then there will be the energy value will be also lower, protein value will also be lower. This lowers the quality of the rice bran. The molasses it is a byproduct of sugar refining industry. It can be used in the um, uh, poultry feed to reduce the dustiness and improves um, for improving palate. And it is the concentrated water solution of sugar, hemicellulose, and minerals. So it is a good source of mineral also. It is considered that it increases palatability. But in case of poultry, as discussed earlier, also it can differentiate between sweet is like human. This, the, in, but um, this this is not probably this probably not the case with poultry where taste perception is increased more by texture. So it reduces dustiness and improves palatability. So it can be added in the diet. It is uh, the source of energy. Both can and beet molasses contain about 46 to 48 percent sugar. So it is a good source of energy. Around 2500 to 2800 metabolizable energy kilocalorie per kg. It is available in semi liquid and viscous form. And it can be included into up to 2 percent in sick ration and 4 percent in grower or layer ration. But the major problem in using molasses in the feed formation is. And it's higher potassium content at 2.5 to 3.5%, which have laxative effect and cause increase in the water intake on boards, causing the loop drop in weight litter problem. Another energy source you can see it is a corn gluten meal. It is a byproduct from the manufacture of corn starch and corn syrup. It is very high in protein supplement. In feed for livestock and poultry, as well as high in energy also. It is deficient in lysine, contains high xanthophylls, and it is very common ingredient where there is need in pigment in like um, feed color or in pigment in poultry products. Then we can use uh, corn gluten milk and more than 10%. If we use more than 10%, then the color of the uh, poultry products will be seen. <coughs> Like other maize products, corn gluten milk can be contaminated with mycotoxins, fumarins, and uh, gelinol. These are the mycotoxins which can be seen, which can be found in uh, corn gluten milk. Another problem with corn gluten milk is uh, mod its moderate palatability. It's not so uh, palatable as maize. Inclusion, so inclusion rate for young maize is, is around 15%, and in adult, it is up to 20% in adults. And it is good source of protein, 55 to 60 percent protein. Energy also 3,750 to 3,900 kilocalories per kg. Another product is DTGS, distillers, dry grain solubles. DTGS are a serial byproduct of the distillation process. Mainly, um, it is effective replacement of soy and corn in the poultry diet with the added benefit that it reduces the cost by replacing soy in the diet. Is the price of the soya is increasing day by day, then the DDGS can be used in the poultry feed. Is it is the source of both 
energy and protein, which can replace both the energy and protein source. Mostly it is using cattle and poultry as a protein and energy source. During the, uh, during the uh, process of DTGS, during the ethanol making process, the dry, and dist dry distillers grains with solvers DTGS are, are, can be um, obtained. But uh, in, in this case, the corn is used. Similarly, other like rice, oats, they, are, they can also be used as the source. It is a very cheap source of crude protein, crude fiber, available phosphorus, unsaturated fatty acids, and essential amino acids. It can be added to the diet of laying it, and hence at the level of 10 to 20 percent, accounting for about 30 percent of the total dietary protein without synthetic license supplementation and has no effect on egg production or egg weight. Therefore, in broiler, uh, high quality DGS can be used uh, in a young age 6 percent uh, and up to and in finisher 12 to 15 percent. Uh, and in layers also, up, we can use up to 20% of the diet. One of the problem in using DDGS is sulfate toxicity, which is, uh, which is, um, which we, 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 we can, it can be contaminated with uh, sulfate toxicity during the uh, ethanol extraction process and other mycotoxin, copper toxicity, because um, the ethanol in the vessels are the Apparatus which is used for ethanol extraction. If that is, if the copper is used, copper vessels is used, then copper toxicity might be the problem in using the DDGS in the diet. So good quality DDGS, it can be, uh, it has the following specifications like moisture 10 to 12 percent, protein 44 percent, fat 8 to 9 percent, minerals as 5 to 7 percent, fiber 6 to 8 percent, and energy 2,962 to 3,000 kilocalorie per kg. Similarly, the other energy sources are sorghum. It is an alternative to corn, but there is no color issue. If there are no color issues, then we can replace the maize with sorghum, but we, in here we can, we are not using. It contains tannins. So due to the, this anti nutrition factor tannin, which binds the protein, it, 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 cannot, it cannot be used properly. Crude protein 9% and metabolized energy, similar to maize. 30,250. Inclusion rate maximum 20% in young and 40 to 50% 40, 40 in adult and years. This is also the another energy source. Barley, it is uh, medium content of energy and protein. Young ones are less able to digest due to beta glucan content and trips in elevator content in the barley. Protein content is around 11 to 12%. Metabolism energy 2,780 kilocalories per kg. And it can be included in diet around 10% in young ones and 15 to 30% in adult and years with the addition of the beta glucanase enzyme. Similarly, wheat byproducts during the processing of the wheat, um, as already told, uh, during the processing and cleaning wheat, subsequent manufacture of flour, uh, up to 40% of the weight is classified as byproduct. Only 60% are used for the human consumption. There is great variation in, variation in the products according to the place. Because um, wheat bran, wheat sorts, and wheat middlings, they all are the byproducts. Wheat bran, wheat sorts, and wheat middlings, they all have the different energy and protein concentrations. Presence of high fiber in bran, higher natural phytase enzyme, and presence of xylene are some of the, its features. In bran, there is a high natural phytase enzyme and presence of high fiber and presence of xylene. These are wheat bran. So, inclusion level of sorts and screening, they can be included up to 10% in young ones and 30% in adults, whereas in wheat pound, maximum 10% due to is high fiber content, maximum 10% can be included in the diet. These are the nutritive value of the wheat byproducts like sorts, screening, and burn. In sort and screening, 15% of um, crude fiber and energy value is higher, 2,200 and 3,000 kilocalorie. And in bar, there's high fiber content. So protein content is higher, slight higher than wheat source and skinny. And wheat bar, it has low energy, 1,580 kilocalorie, metabolic energy only per kg. Regulation of dietary energy and feed intake in poultry nutrition is the energy uh, is the major source. So Amount of feed consumed by the animal determines the amount of nutrient that is available to the animal for maintenance and production, productive functions. The increase and decrease of the feed intake 
uh, of the food intake in relation to dietary energy content is influenced by the amount of food in the gut or other physiological limitations. The food intake uh, can be influenced by other physiological limitations also. It discussed the higher the energy level, then there will be lower the feed intake. And if the energy value of the feed is low, then feed intake will be increased. So according to the energy level or feed intake, the other nutrient parameters should be set in the feed formation. When the energy density increases, the intake of feed decreases. So accordingly, the crude protein should be adjusted in the diet. How can we improve the energy utilization in ingredients? like addition of the fat uh, addition of the fat to the diets steam pelleting or conditioning and use of soft fat specific enzymes to break down the some of the poorly digested and dietary components like aluminum mixing of saturated and unsaturated fat together in the proper proportion to enhance the fatty acid absorption use of synthetic essential amnesis to give a better balanced lower protein diet so if the protein content, protein percentage of the diet is slightly lower, then if the amino acids are balanced, then there will be no problem in feed. Precision grinding of cereal grains to increase the surface area. This allows more efficient enzyme action, resulting in enhanced nutrient availability. Therefore, the precision grinding of the cereal grains also is the important. So the surface area of the grains or ingredients will be increased and the enzyme can act over those and release the energy available for the bars. Some polysaccharides such as hemicellulose, beta glucans and pentosans are not properly digested. So for this purpose, appropriate enzymes are required for breaking down and utilizing the energy of the ingredients. Finally, these are the uh, points which I have discussed in my slide. Like these are the various energy sources like maize, rice or rice, broken rice, wheat, Full fat soyas, fats and oils, rice bran, corn gluten meal, molasses, DDGA, sorghum, barley, wheat bran, DOC, etc. These are the um, major energy sources which we are commonly used, uh, uh, but sorghum we are not using, barley we, we are not using. So these are the tentative metabolism energy value in kilocalorie per kg of the ingredients. These are the tentative. Uh, protein content of the ingredients and I have included the included the inclusion level of the maximum and maximum uh, inclusion level of the ingredients in the this slide like maize 60 to 70 percent broken rice or rice 40 to 55 percent wheat 15 to 25 percent full fat so I am having this I like to conclude my presentation in uh, common energy sources which are used in Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asare, for your wonderful presentation on the common energy energy sources used in poultry feed formulation. Now I request you to go through the chat box if there are any questions there. Yeah, there, there is one question regarding grain count. Can you see? Yeah, how grain count of the uh, corn influence energy and protein content. Generally, if we in bulk density of the grains, uh, if we count 100 gram, 100 grains, then the size or the weight of the grains will give us the idea about um, uh, the energy content of the uh, grains. As earlier, I have said that the smaller grains, which are dead seeds or immature seeds, which um, such type of grains will have lower energy value and which have higher um, weight in comparison of the uh, lower weight grains, then there will be estimate, the estimated energy value is higher in the higher weight grain of the high, higher weight of the grains. Uh, canola meal is very good source of uh, energy in case of poultry because it is the um, uh, because it is because uh, very similar to the uh, our rapeseed but the anti nutritional factors in the canola are deactivated or they have lower 
lower side of the antinutrition factors. But uh, allowance or import of the canola meal, I'm not sure about the import of the canola meal in the uh, Nepali market, but it can be safely used in case of poultry. Uh, corn gluten meal contains 55 to 6% CPS. It is, um, as I have already mentioned, that the energy protein sources also they, they, um, uh, provide the sufficient amount of uh, sufficient amount of energy to our, to the feed out of poultry. So they I have listed over that because uh, uh, so I have been I know the maize in maize three thousand three hundred kilocalorie we have considered a, it as the energy source but in corn gluten meal it more than uh, maize we can get the energy source so I have listed in the energy source however it is the major source of protein how can we perform density test at what interval. Uh, in in rancidity test, uh, the visual uh, and the smell, uh, we can be, we can uh, use those olfactory senses for the um, for testing rancidity. And uh, if the rancid rancidity is positive, then we can um, feel the uh, bad smell in the uh, rice polis. So. We can store if the moisture percentage or storage facility is good. We can store it around one month. There will be no problem in the uh, rice polis. Use of starch, sucrose, sucrose, and lactose is in our source place. We can use lactose and sucrose as energy source, but um, in case of uh, in is a, is a uh, ingredient we can uh, i think it will be uh, uh, it will be um, more hard it can it can be used through the water also is there any way to test sulfur content of it yes uh, we can test uh, in laboratory this year uh, sulfur content of it is yes what's the what the other chemicals that can cause problem uh, other are the mycotoxins are the major other problems and copper copper also if the um, the vessel is of copper then during the ethanol extraction then copper is also the another chemical toxin toxin which can be in the disease uh, sir um, uh, pl plant dried or sun dried which should be preferred and why yes sir plant dried ddgs and sun dried ddgs which should be preferred and why uh, if a plant in they both have a, uh, uh, benefits, if the sun dried, then the uh, vitamin D T three is also the supplement in uh, sun dried. But in barn dried, then the if sun dried, then it is I think in my opinion, the the other harmful uh, chemicals uh, can also be detoxified during sun dried. So I think sun dried also uh, good in to use. And what may be the what may the maximum level of EM value taken information of? Yes, as I saw as I have shown in the uh, uh, pictures that if you see the large grains with uh, um, without any weevils or any uh, immature seeds, then we can use around. I am using personally. I am using around three thousand two hundred fifty thirty two thousand thirty two hundred and fifty EM. I have kept like this in my formulation. Yeah, for maize, if we are using good quality chinese, for maize, uh, around up to 60%, the chinese um, would increase its metabolism value. But if we are using other, uh, like rice bran and wheat, we can use chinese. Do commercial food formulation complete in Nepal to practice shifting of diet in some of Commonly, uh, I have not seen like this, but uh, in in but not uh, in all, the commercial feed promotion in, in once the problem in the field comes, like uh, then they will shift or they will change the formulations according to season. Currently, uh, suppose I am in one of the company, then I, then we are changing we are changing the formulation in the season season wise.
like addition of the um, sodium bicarbonate in that I, I uh, balancing the amino acids and decreasing the protein content there that we are doing. Okay, I think uh, okay, there is still one more question. Uh, what's the total percent of the parts of means combined that should be accepted like we will imagine? Come on. What's the total percent of one part of means combined that should be accepted like we will? Yes. Uh, when you see the um, material ingredient first, then if you, uh, we can use we can use the we will image but not fungus fungus will be the, um, the that will produce mycotoxin and will have various effect in the growth as well as mortality in the boiler so uh, we will an image we can accept but we you should um, input the energy source is like that like 2200 not 3200 which source of oil and uh, is best fit for them in uh, oil, fats and oils, the, uh, as I have shown that in the raw oil, there are various anti-nutritive factors which will affect the growth of the poultry. So refine well, but with the base source, like if we, the, uh, the oil are, um, get more free fatty acids during storage or expo exposure or heating, then the energy value will be low. So soybean oil is the best for the poultry and refine one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Asare, for your insightful talk and for addre addressing uh, the queries. And also thank you very much, dear participant, for your overwhelming influx of uh, queries. I again request uh, the participant to feel free to put their questions in the chat box. Uh, and I'd like to thank Dr. Achare. Uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to deliver your insightful uh, talk.